Number 45. Determine the number of moles and the mass requested for each reaction in exercise 4.44. And then we have letter E out of those questions. So in letter E, they want us to find out the number of moles and the mass of barium peroxide, which is BaO2, uh, which is needed to produce 2.500 kilograms of barium oxide, BaO. And then they give us a little tip here. They say that O2 is the other product. So the first thing we have to do is we just have to analyze what's going on here and figure out what we have to do, right? Now, I noticed that they gave us a amount of one compound, right? They gave us 2.500 kilograms of barium oxide, but then the question is asking for an amount, right? We need to find both the moles and the mass of a different compound, which in this case is BAO. When we have this type of setup, when they give us an amount of one compound and they're asking for information about another compound, we're just doing stoichiometry. Woohoo! Stoichiometry is just, <laughs> it's just a complicated way of saying, Let's do dimensional analysis and ratios with the balanced equation. That's all that it is. But the key thing here is that we have to have a balanced equation, right? They didn't give us a balanced equation, so we gotta make it up. Now we've done tons of problems learning how to make a balanced equation and you know balancing an actual equation. So if you need help, and if you're on the playlist, which I highly recommend you are, go check out the first uh, videos of this playlist. They're all spread throughout. Uh, there's tons of practice problems for you guys to work on your balancing. And then um, this, you know, doing it right here would be all good. So if you want to try, pause the video and see if you can make up your own balanced equation for this. I'm just going to go ahead and do it a little bit quickly because we have a lot to do here. So in this case, we want to find the moles and the mass of BaO2, which is needed to produce barium oxide and the other product is O2. So in this case, it, it seems that the BaO2, the barium hydroxide, is going to produce, which means yield, the first product, which is barium oxide, and then the other product, which is O2. Cool. Now, just writing out the equation like this isn't good enough. We just have to make sure that it's balanced. So now I'm just going to quickly just go over this and see if it's balanced. It's not, because on the left side, I only have two oxygens. And on the right side, I have one plus two. So I have a total of three oxygens on this side. So I'm going to just have to balance it. So I'm just going to put a two in front of here just to jack up the oxygen number on this, case, on this case. And this will force me to have two bariums. So if I put a two in front of here, I have two bariums. And now the oxygens are correct. Two plus two is four. And then I have four oxygens on the other side. So it's balanced. Okay, next thing that I like to do is I like to keep everything nice and neat. So I'm just gonna write out what I have under the compound that is given. So I have 2.500 kilograms of the BAO. So I go to the BAO and I just say 2.500 kilograms, cool. And then the question was asking for what's the moles and the mass of the barium peroxide, which is BAO2. So I'm just gonna go over here and say, okay, they want us to find the moles, you got it. They want us to find the mass, which is in grams. Remember that, guys, right? So you got it. Now it kind of shows you a little bit better that they gave you information for one compound, and the question is really asking you to go to somewhere else on the equation. So when we have to do this, and when we have to do stoichiometry, just remember the general flow of a stoichiometric problem, and it's this. Okay. So I color coded this. And if you want guys, just write this down on your test or quizzes, right? It will help you remember the flow for stoichiometry problems in general. So the red is the number or the compound that they gave you an actual amount for. That's what you're starting with. And then the B's, right? Or the blue guys are the information or the compound that you're searching for. So this is what you have and this is what you want. And remember the flow, grams to moles to moles to grams. Grams to moles to moles to grams. Okay, now we're just gonna cater this flow to what we specifically um, have. Now, do you see a problem? A little bit of a problem, right? Because I have grams here. However, the initial starting material was kilograms. <gasps> oh man, what do we gotta do? 
Yeah, first we got to convert this kilogram into the gram amount. So I'm just going to quickly do that, right? We know how to convert kilograms to grams, right? All you have to do when you're going from kilograms to gram is just times by a thousand. Similarly, you could take the decimal and move it over three spots to the right. So this would be the same thing as uh, 2,500 grams. And this is the number that I'm going to say I start with. So 2,500 grams of specifically, not A, but now I say that it's of BAO. So from this information, I could find the moles of BAO. And then I can convert to the compound that they're looking for. Now, the specific compound that they're looking for is BAO2. So BAO2. And then from there, I could find the grams, which is the mass of BAO2. Cool. Now we have our flow. So let's, let's get down to business. So uh, first things first, always start with what you're given, right? So in this case, I'm just going to have 2,500, and then I'm going to color code this. So grams of BAO, this is the starting product, or the starting amount. It is a product, though. And we're just going to use our ratios. We're going to multiply by a ratio to get to the next unit. So in that case, work with the units first, and then double back and put the numbers. So you don't want grams of BAO. That goes on the opposite side. And look ahead to see what the unit on the top is. It's going to be moles of BAO. OK, so the units are all set. Now the question is, what are the numbers that go on the top and the bottom? Well, we've actually done this, this conversion before, right? Whenever we convert from grams of one compound to moles of the same compound, we use the periodic table, the PT. And remember, when you're using the periodic table information, there's always going to be one mole. So if you're using the periodic table, the one always goes with the word mole. Whether it's on the top or the bottom doesn't make a difference. The one goes with the mole. The grams, on the other hand, is the molar, you know, is the grams that are going to be found on the periodic table of B, A, and O. So we've got to get our periodic tables out. We've got to get our calces out and figure out what one barium and one oxygen is. So I'm looking at my periodic table. Barium is 137.3, and then an oxygen is 16. So I get roughly 153.3. Okay. Hey, that's, that's a little too cramped. Hold on a minute. 153.3. Cool. Now everything is accounted for, so I can cancel out the units that cancel out, the one on the top and the bottom. Keep in mind that the numbers do not cancel. The numbers still stay there. Now, we don't have to get an answer here, right? That's just going to waste time on tests and quizzes. So kind of get into the mindset of keep going with the flow until you end up at an answer that they actually wanted, right? Right now we're here in our little scheme of things. But they wanted moles of the other compound. So I have to at least go to this way. So I want to keep flowing, which means that I will multiply by another ratio and basically do the same thing as I did before. Start with the units and then put the numbers in. You don't want mole of BAO. That goes on the bottom. And look to the next one to see who wants to be on top. Now, in this case, we're going to transfer over compounds. We want to find out the mole of BaO2. Units are there now, just like last time. We got to find out what the numbers are here. So now this is different from the last one because I don't see any grams in my conversion, right? It's just mole and a mole. So I'm not using the periodic table. But the only thing that these have a relationship with, right, the two different compounds is the balanced equation. So this step is using the balanced equation. Specifically, you're going to be using the coefficients, aka the big numbers, in front of the uh, compounds in the balanced equation. That's why the balanced equation is so important. 
only focus on the compounds that you're actually looking for. So in this case, I only care about BaO2 and BaO. I don't even care about oxygen, O2. So there's a two in front of the BaO2. So I will put a two here. And then there's a two in front of the BaO. So I'll put a two here. Everything's accounted for. So now I can cancel out my units. And here is one of the answers. That's the unit that I want. So I'm going to solve. Now two divided by two is just one. So for math purposes, we don't even have to do that step. But I see that I have a 153.3 down here. You think denominator divide. So 2,500 divided by 153.3 in the calci, I get, let's see, I get 16.31. And that's in moles of BAO, two. Now, the reason why I cut it off to the hundredths place is because technically, according to sig figs, because we can never get away from those, right? Me personally, I could care less, right? If you would have given me 16.3, I would have given you full credit, right? So, but there are some teachers or professors out there that go hard on the sig figs. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but, but let me just give you the, the little side note here. When you're converting and when you're using all these conversion factors, the significant figures in any of these don't count for anything. The sig figs at the end of the question need to be the amount that you started with. Since you started with four sig figs, these zeros count, right? In the 2.500, uh, you need to end with four sig figs. That's the rule. Whatever you start with, that's how many sig figs you got to end with. So here's the first answer. We're over here. But now they just want us to find the mass of the barium peroxide. So I'm just going to keep flowing with it. So I'm going to take the answer that I had. So 16.31 moles of BaO2. And I'm just converting. So multiply by the ratio. Work with the units, then put the numbers. This unit has to be on the opposite side. So mole of BaO2 on the bottom. And then look to see who's next. Grams. So grams of BaO2 go up on top. And now what are the numbers? Well, I have now a gram value and a mole, just like before. It was grams and moles. What did we use? The periodic table? <gasps> Shocker. We got to use the periodic table again. And remember, what did we say? When we use the periodic table, the one always goes with the mole. So now the mole's on the bottom. So you have one mole on the bottom. And then the mass of BaO2 is going to go on the top. So we got to go back to our periodic table. We got to take into the consideration that there's one barium and now two oxygens. So 32, because 16 times 2 for oxygen. And then 137.3. So I get 169.3. Everything is accounted for. Cancel the units out that cancel. And then just solve, because that's the answer that we're looking for. So 16. 0.31 times, they're both in the numerator, 169.3. I got to keep to the four sig figs. So I'm just going to say 2,761 grams of BaO2. And just remember that the mole value, the 16.31 moles of BaO2 that we found, is the same amount as 2,761 grams. They're equivalent to each other, just different units. Now, what does this really mean? Is that if you wanted to produce 2.5 kilograms, aka 2,500 grams of BAO, you would need 2,761 grams of BAO2. That's it. You're just basically, it's like a recipe, right? I need to make, you know, 2,500 cookies. So I need 2,761 cups of flour. It's basically the same thing, but just in chemistry land. But chemistry is cooking, basically. Anyway, <laughs> I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'll give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Good luck in your studies and good luck in your future studies. 
and I'll be seeing you soon. Not seeing you, but I'll be talking to you. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.